Hi, my name's Mark, one of the pastors at Trillium. Do you remember the Tickle Me Elmo toy? It came out in the summer of 1996. Taco Toys brought this toy out called Tickle Me Elmo based on the Elmo character from Sesame Street. And it had a decent launch. You know, it's a Sesame Street character based toy. It was going to do reasonably well. But it wasn't an overwhelming success. And yet over time, interest started to build by it. The time of the Christmas shopping season that year, the Tickle Me Elmo toy had become a phenomenon. Everybody wanted the toy. And that caught Tyco Toys off guard because they didn't expect this. So supply ran short. People were in stores fighting over the toy. People were mobbing stores that got new supply. People were even following delivery trucks around who had the toy inside. Some people took the toy and resold it 10, 20, 50, 100, 200 times the original price crazy. I think the Tickle Me Elmo toy phenomenon is a perfect example of mimetic desire. Mimetic desire, imitative desire. We tend to imitate each other in what we want in life, what we desire in life. We look to each other as guides and when we all want the same thing, wow, that puts us into a place of potential rivalry with each other. If we're in the store and the Tickle Me Elmo toy is in low supply, and we're both reaching for the same toy, we can be placed in a position of rivalry, of conflict, of even violence with each other. Sometimes rivalry can even take us to, the, to places of destruction. Rivalry is a big part of our experience in life. We find rivalry in families. There's even a phrase for it. Sibling rivalry. That's so when children enter into a rivalry relationship with each other for their parents' affirmation, love, affection. We can see rivalry between spouses. We can find rivalry in business partnerships. We can find rivalry in academic faculties, political parties. We can see rivalry between tribes and nations. Sometimes rivalry enters into relationships between nations. Unfortunately, sometimes rivalry can exist between religions. So rivalry is a big part of our lives. In the Gospel of Matthew, in chapters 5, 6, and 7, there's something called the Sermon on the Mount. It's a collection of Jesus' teachings. And if I had to summarize the Sermon on the Mount in one line, it would be this. When rivalry rears its head in your relationships with others, nip it in the bud. You've got to derail the rivalry right away. You've got you to send it into the ditch. If you let rivalry... Uh, if you let rivalry get out of control in your relationships with others, this thing can escalate into places you don't want to go. So you got to nip it right in the bud. In one of the sections of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus refers to a teaching from the book of Leviticus. It says this, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. See, the Old Testament tried to put a limit on the impacts of mimetic desire, that imitative desire that leads to rivalry in life. Try to put a limit on what can happen. If someone slaps you across the face, you're only supposed to slap them that much back in life. No more. That's the limit. Someone slaps you across the face and knocks a tooth out, you can slap them back hard enough to knock their tooth out. And, and that means that we're limited in what we can do in our rival relationships. question is, does it work? Answer, I don't think so. I slap you across the face and knock your tooth out, you're probably inclined to slap me even harder back and knock two of my teeth out. And then I slap you back harder and knock three teeth out. And this whole thing keeps escalating until we don't have any teeth, either of us. You know, you say something nasty to me and I respond in, respond in kind. I imitate you. I, I respond in kind. I send a nasty comment back. This thing escalates upwards and we have no relationship. We understand these places of rivalry and when they happen, Jesus says, you got to nip them right in the bud. you got to nip them right in the bud. And he offers the antidote to rivalry, which is love. You know, someone wants to grab your coat, you, you don't fight with them for it, you give it to them. You substitute love for rivalry. When someone wants you to go a mile with them, you go two miles with them. You even go beyond what they ask for as a way of making sure that you substitute love for rivalry. Now, i got to admit to you, this is hard to do. I'm really not good at this. When those rivalry moments come to me, when someone pushes the button for rivalry with me, I enter into it. I enter into those places of rivalry, and, and yet I know where it's going to take me. And it's not a good place. I'm grateful to have a community like Trillium where I can practice 
substituting love for rivalry. Because see, it, it takes practice. And to be in a community of people who recognize how hard it is to change in this area of life, to be in a community where forgiveness and reconciliation, mercy and repentance are a big part of our lives with each other, well, that just gives me the safe place to practice this. Because I'm convinced if I get enough opportunities to practice, I can live out the ways that Jesus teaches me to. And that someday, when rivalry reveals itself to me, when I'm tempted to enter into rivalry with another, I will then in that place, by God's grace, be able to offer love in place of rivalry.